So good morning, everyone. Um, we're just going to start in just a couple of seconds. All right. All right, perfect. So let's let's get started. Um, so today's topic it's gonna be uh, the telescopic tooling. I don't know if you had a chance to to watch the video on YouTube. Um, it's just it was just a, a kind of like a teaser video, but this is about a specific axis that Oliver is gonna be talking about. So here you can see that's the invitation that you probably saw uh, floating around on LinkedIn. We have Oliver there, uh, his picture. He's actually also on online right now on the video. Uh, a couple of things that I wanted to mention. Um, here we go. So you can see Oliver is there. We're also, uh, we're uh, Alejandro and myself, we're the hosts for this session. And uh, we also wanted to have this, this, this uh, picture here so you know uh, how to contact us if you had any further questions after the session, okay? So uh, one thing, we're gonna be recording this session so you can watch it later. If in case that you miss something or you have to jump off the call, you can always watch it later. And you can also check out the email addresses in case that you need to send it, send us something. So Alejandro, uh, Alejandro and Oliver, uh, Oliver, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, Oliver, hey really appreciate your time. Uh, you are truly our special guest today. So <laughs> let's get started. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, good to be here. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm Oliver Fernandez, as Sandro mentioned, and I work for Festo Canada in the Customer Solutions Department. Uh, short background for me, I've been working in the industrial automation field for about the last 15 years, uh, with the last eight being at Festo. Uh, so again, uh, I'm here today to present the telescopic actuator, uh, which was developed here in Festo Canada. And it has, uh, it has pleased us that it's gathered a lot of uh, interest lately through our social media posts. Um, yeah, Sandro said it was a teaser and it's really, it was just, uh, just a casual video we took and some pictures um, that we took in our shop. But it, we're, as I said, we're really pleased. It gathered a lot of attention it, and it, it just led to us to thinking that now would be a good time to, us to uh, present this in a little more detail. So. Yeah, next 10 minutes or so, I'm just going to uh, you know, talk about the short background on how, how this design came to be, top level description of how this works, give you a little rundown on the specs of this tooling, and some future developments that we plan on doing on this tooling. So, so, Oliver, sorry to interrupt you quickly. Uh, Sandro, also for the audience right now, uh, remember that you are more than welcome to ask any question. Uh, during the presentation or at the end, we're gonna stay for a little bit longer than 30 minutes in case you wanna rejoin us. Uh, in case the meeting ends up uh, after the free Zoom session, then you can, you're more than welcome to reconnect and we will be there for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last thing is questions in English, Francais and Espanol are more than welcome. So, y si tienen alguna pregunta o quieren interrumpir, son más que invitados, okay? Dale, Oliver. Go ahead, Oliver. All right. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, Alejandro, can you, can you allow me to share my screen? Oh, sure. Oh, sorry. Of course, Sandro. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right, gracias. All right, um, let's see. You can also see the, the telescopic tooling in one of the videos yeah. that are right now on. Yeah. Go ahead, Oliver. Okay, so this tooling, telescopic tooling, came as a result of a need in an uh, ASRS system, or an automated storage and retrieval system. Um, in a nutshell, just to brief review what that is. It's a, basically it's a storage system usually with shelves on the front and the back and in the middle is your gantry system and the purpose of the gantry system is to deliver product from one side of a shelf to another or to reorganize products within its existing shelf or to transport them you know back and forth. Uh, space is at a premium um, in these type of designs because you want more products in in your your given space, so a lot of times you don't have a lot of room 
for again your tooling. So you have to be creative in the way you transport uh, these these products. So early on, a couple of years ago, we were approached with this application, um, a vending machine, and we developed our sort of a first telescopic tooling, which was a telescopic tooling, which went in only in one direction. So it'd go from the middle outwards. Uh, we utilized our existing uh, EGC ball screw, uh, tooth belt actuators, coupled with some mechanical um, mechanisms. Now this was used, is used in these vending machines that you will see, or have seen in the Toronto Pearson Airport. Next time, whenever that is, you're, you're able to travel. Um, if you see these, these vending machines for the source, they dispense um, electronic components. And you can clearly see, uh, so we were able to show this because there's nothing to hide. Um, you can clearly see our Festo mechanism and uh, this telescopic actuator you'll see, and it takes um, all, all these, one of these products, puts it on the output bin for the consumer. So one one important thing that you have mentioned uh, is that these products, so this this first pass, this this first um, uh, version of it, was based also on a standard Festo actuator, right? For sure, yeah, yeah. So through the process of these iterative processes, we've we've always leveraged standard Festo right. products as the base. And in customer solutions, you know, our role is to use standard products, but customize it or engineering it in a way where we, we're not limited to just Festo products. We use other third-party uh, mechanisms uh, to create a, an automated solution that you cannot find in a catalog. So that's, yeah, it's a good point. We, we always leverage uh, existing Festo product. Yeah, one of the things um, that we also mention is like the possibility to instead of using, let's say, Festo motors, you can use anything else. You can use any third party material motors, which is an advantage because then mm -hmm. you have a nice tooling that can be attached to pretty much any any motor in the market. Mm -hmm. And the setup is fairly simple. Yeah, yeah and we, we admit that like we acknowledge that customers have different specs for their motors and we're okay with that. You know, we, we can still support uh, the customer's application. Obviously we'd like to propose our Festo motors first, but uh, we're, we're open to interfacing exactly. with others. Exactly. Okay. Um, so what I have on this screen is our, our first generation fully teles telescopic tooling. So it, it totally, it fully goes, um, forwards and backwards, um, all within this, this envelope here. Uh, we yeah. developed this for a pharmaceutical application. Um, we really tried to make it really slim because the shelves were very small and didn't have a lot of room. So this is our first application where we saw the need of having a very slim, low profile telescopic tooling um, that could be used in an ASRS system for, um, uh, and in this case, it was without revealing too much, it was um, canisters, plastic canisters of product. Um, the canister was very thin, maybe, I don't know, 30 mil wide. Um, so mm. we, we designed it to fit within the shelving and to accommodate the product. So this is one of those other uh, situations where you really want to keep things tight because of the space retri restrictions, right? Uh, I see yeah. there you have the dimension for the overall length of the of the device, which is 364 millimeters. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the how how far can it extend? What's the reach? So in this version, um, there's a three to one ratio. So for every millimeter the main EGC access goes, this top stage would move three millimeters. Oh wow. It's, yeah, so that's the amplification process that we've designed into this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the next iteration we did, it's a variant actually. Um, this was for a heavy duty application. So this one payload was about 10 kilos, but the product itself was wide. So obviously we couldn't use our previous design, which is very thin, is thin for a purpose. Um, but we had to accommodate this, which was um, 200, mil, 200 mil wide maybe and 10 okay. kilo. So the way we um, picked up and placed this product was through magnets, permanent magnets embedded within the, the top stage of this product. And we would um, pick up from underneath the, 
this this tray, this metallic tray. And by removing it, we would strip off the magnet by either lowering from the z-axis or shearing off uh, with the tooling, uh, the magnets. You can also see it's, this is really a, a fully integrated solution with sensors and barcode readers. So it's sort of like a, a smart telescopic actuator. Um, you have sensors to detect the placement of the products within the telescopic tooling. That determines that it's in a safe position for this tooling to move. Mm. So it's, uh, you know, it prevents crashes and, and the like. And there's some barcode readers too <laughs> to detect, um, to read each of the trays that are in the shelves. So it's, it's great for uh, data tracking as well. Cool. Uh, do you guys usually use um, stepper, draw, uh, stepper motors or servo motors, mm. or it doesn't right. really matter? Uh, so yeah, so let's go back to this one. This one was stepper. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't really require a lot of, of torque or speed. Uh, this one was servo because we did need the speed. And this one was servo because it needed the torque and speed. So mm -hmm. yeah, in a nutshell, we can use whatever. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. The application. Obviously, cost is a concern. So steppers you'd yeah, use for exactly. some cost considerations, but depending on whatever the customer needs, we'll, we'll adapt the other thing. That. The other, the other thing also important on this, Oliver, and you you probably have it in your mechanical setup is how you bring all those cables from the tooling mm -hmm. back to the main cabinet, and that's also a concern because you have a high speed telescoping running or actually flying through a bunch of canisters locations and then you don't want to have a lot of cables running around so one yeah. of the advantages of yeah. using let's say like a stepper motors or servo motors with a single cable technology is that you can reduce the amount of right. significantly the amount of cables and if you put everything on the on a particular network that allows you to put power over the network like power over ethercad or power over ethernet ip then you can minimize the amount of cables going going through the tooling that's right yeah, yeah. Cable management is a very important, yep. sometimes forgotten aspect of, mm -hmm. uh, of design for gantries. Yeah. So that's one of the benefits exactly. of this telescopic because the top stage, as it is right now, we're relying mostly on um, you know, just mechanics of, of restraining the product, be it pins, um, locating pins or magnets. So on that top stage, you have no moving cables, which eliminates the need for a cable track, which makes it a lot cleaner and a lot simpler, which allows us to keep the tooling uh, a little more condensed because we don't have to worry about cable management. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So that's um, through those iterations that led us to develop a quote unquote standard telescopic actuator standard in a way that now customers can look at this product and design around this mm -hmm. instead of vice versa, where we design to an application. So it just opens our, us to, to more customers and more applications where they can see this product. It's already, uh, it's, it's a system. Um, what and you Oliver, get with this is, yeah. Sorry, I was gonna ask, and, 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 and I know that uh, usually, and actually today also, we have participants from all around the world. So is this something that uh, customers can buy all around the world? Yes, for sure. Um, right now, there's no specific part number for it per se as a, in a catalog, a catalog number, you know, we would need quantity for that. But no, for sure, we've, we've already sold a lot of these units and I'll go into detail to that later, but um, it's, you go through our customer solutions department and that's how you purchase it. That's how you Got purchase it. a lot of these um, uh, custom solutions as the name entails customer solutions yeah. these custom right. automated um, systems through our customer solutions department all right and we can provide a quote exactly, yeah. to you as a system yeah okay just just want to make some yeah. some devices everywhere somewhere oliver do you remember I'm sorry. oh yeah, yeah um so a lot to the first to the u.s for um medical we got some of these well. in dubai i believe and uh, different areas that we're already Right, yeah, and the vending machines, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So our our end users will send them all over the world, and yeah, they've they they are a presence on in many many countries. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully we'll see some more as as this product gets recognition. Right. Well, uh, one comment, guys. We are halfway through the session, so just wanted to give you a sure. heads up. No problem. Thank you. 
Okay, so now here's here's the uh, the product that you've seen in 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 the videos and in posts. So this is our our standard, so somewhat, somewhat standard. It utilizes our ELGC actuator. ELGC it's a covered ball screw actuator, and the rail is covered with a stainless steel um, <clears throat> uh, strip. So it's totally enclosed. It's a nice clean looking version. Uh, we have our middle stage and our top stage. So at the top level, the way it works is the ELGC base axis drives through a rack and pinion, the middle mm -hmm. axis, which then drives the top axis, which is through a uh, timing belt and pulley. So the system you would get would be this um, whole mechanical system with the EMMS ST is our stepper motor, and then mm -hmm. also our CMMO stepper drive. So okay. that's what's included. What the customer would be responsible for is the the top, so the tooling portion of it. I just gave examples of what we provided in the past, stainless steel uh, bracket with some locating pins mm -hmm. or the embedded uh, magnets. On, on right, the because we don't really know what the customer is gonna be carrying on that axis, right? We that's don't, no. So yeah, the customer usually has a better gauge of what the um, product is and they probably have a better idea of how to handle that. So a lot of times okay. we leave that as a scope to them. Okay, uh, One there's one question in the chat that I already kind of answered or I just sure. gave a, a preface there. Uh, there uh, Mateos is asking about commissioning of the access inside of the Festo software. So Ale I know Alejandro is gonna probably touch a little bit on this uh, uh, and I just mentioned that, but I just wanted to okay. verbally, yep. verbally yeah, challenge so I think, that. Um, yeah, when we do the video, I think Alejandro will do a step, you know, walk you through how that's commissioned. Okay. So yeah, I'm almost done mechanically. So let's just, uh, I'm gonna go over the specs, um, just yeah. as an FYI. Um, yeah. This unit itself weighs about six and a half kilos. So about 14 pounds. Okay. Uh, dimension wise, it's about 400 mil long, 112 mil high from the base to the top of the top stage and about 78 mil wide. So the width is would be the, the width of the middle and top stage, which actually would engage within your um, your shelving. Uh, top speed is about 0 0.8 meters per second. That's driven by the ball screw speed of this ELGC. Uh, we did some internal tests um, in, for deflection. So we put 10 kilos on the end at fully extended. We saw deflection of about 1.2 mil. And the repeatability, we measured about plus or minus 0 0.05 uh, millimeters. And the life we can estimate about 5,000 kilometers which is uh, correlated to the life of um, the ELGC actuator, which is what all our, our actuators are rated to. Okay. And I also have, we also made a, a PSI documentation for this, which like we can a, share Like a brochure, uh-huh. Yeah, a little brochure, yeah. So we can share that at the end too, to give you some, okay. some info. Um, some developments we're working on, um, integrating a cable track. So like I mentioned, it's, we're kind of limited to the tooling we have on the top. We, have, we need just mechanical pins or magnets, but by integrating a small cable track, now we can uh, is to make this tooling way more versatile. We can uh -huh. add some, some more act, um, uh, mechanisms on the top. So I'm gonna work on making a vacuum cup module that we can Pass it on to the top, just feed in your vacuum through a generator or vacuum uh, blower. I'm also going to integrate some electromagnets, um, feed in some 12, 12 volt DC through here. Or recently we partnered with uh, MagSwitch. They have some very unique magnetic actuators, um, which I'd like to integrate to the top of this telescopic tooling. So that's in the works, um, something to give variety to this tooling. Um, yeah, sounds just. One thing to add is we're not limited to just that size. Um, you know, we will we can adapt to your different payloads or different strokes. Um, this is just a starting point um, that we're presenting. So if you ever have a unique application which falls outside of what we listed in our standard brochure, for sure we can work with you and um, and, and try to deliver a solution that will work for you. Cool. So that's it. So I think um, I'm going to stop sharing and maybe we can actually look at the real, real deal. Yeah. Uh, let me make Alejandro. Uh, 
uh, which se which uh, session where which one is it, Alejandro? The one that you're using? I I don't hear you. I know. Okay, uh, you can it's pick up uh, the, the one where you have Hello. the microphone. Yeah, that one. Okay. I'm gonna um, share my screen over here. Yeah. There you go. You sh you're not you're now the host. You should be able to share. Yep. Okay. So first thing I want to show you guys is uh, a real a real picture of how the system looks like. Uh, in fact, we have we have this uh, this little screen here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Hold on. Uh, new share. This is the one. Uh, this one. Okay. So let me know what you guys see. Do you guys yeah. see the screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So this is how the mechanical system looks like in a high density, uh, compo like a rack. So you can see the amount of areas that you can access from this telescopic tooling. You can see the telescopic tooling all the way down at the bottom of this system. This is an, a three axis system plus the tooling. So, and then this is all control over EtherCAD. That's the first uh, portion of the presentation, which is a nice picture of how then dense can a system be. Uh, and this is how the rack companion looks like uh, from the side. And then of course, this is kind of one of the first systems we built, uh, but it's a demo for demo purposes. Now, let me just store, stop sharing and I'm gonna share now and answer also the question to about the uh, Fest Automation Suite. So it's a fairly simple configuration actually. So you can do it in multiple ways. We set it up in multiple ways actually with a customer. Let's say if the rack and pinion system is a three to one, so you wanna know exactly what the position is at the end of arm tooling, then you're gonna have a gear ratio of three to one in your system if you wanna move it that way on your configuration. So you can pick up just a standard actuator and then add an additional gear ratio on your FAS. So if you go to uh, the device configuration, then here you, we have of an ELGC bolt screw. And we know that the feed constant for this is 12 millimeters per revolution. So we can have uh, the final configuration for the end of arm tooling uh, set up in two ways. One way is you can add an additional gear at the end. This will basically divide or multiply by the rate gear ratio that you have at the end of, uh, at the end of the mechanical device, or you can modify the feed constant in this particular axis you kind of, it's kind of customi customized axis that you're gonna change the feed constant. So the values that you send over Profinet or EtherCAD or, or any other platform will match exactly what the end of arm tooling is doing and not Alejandro, necessarily one, what the first stage. Yeah, go ahead. One question. Um, if, I, if, I com if I configure it with the gear, would that also affect the tuning of the motor? I mean, the, the, you know, the current gains and yes. all of those things? Yeah. So yes, exactly. would, it, would it be better then to do the feed constant because that would be only for the distance and it wouldn't affect the, 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 close, the closed loop parameters, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. So it depends because if you have a mass, let's say this is running on a stepper motor mm -hmm. and then you have a mass that is changing more than 25% from load to load, then you probably have, you want to have a nice tool set up uh, on the tuning area, on the tuning parameters. So right. your mass won't affect the step motor performance. So yeah, you can do it in one way or the other. At the end of the day, we want to move 100 millimeters at the end of arm tooling, you do it one way or the other. And also, some people also do this way. Let's say we installed this system with a back off uh, controller and this was running on EtherCAD. What they did, instead of touching all these configurations, because you don't want technicians to come and start mm -hmm. like thinking how, you, how these guys develop this mecha mechanism and what the gear ratio is. So just leave it as a default parameters. Mm -hmm. And what they did is on the HMI and the mm -hmm. software in the background, they just you know, divided by three or multiplied by three or the gear ratio, and then that's it. So you get technicians on the field, they, they, they know the basics, they can just change the axis and that's it. You don't yeah. have to worry about it. Yeah, so that, that's another way. So yeah, if we go to control right now, I have a, a few, a few um, record 
um, positions here. So let's give it a run. So you guys can see on the screen how the axis is performing. Um, it's a nice setup because you can have multiple ways to control these axes. For example, you can control in torque when you are reaching to a certain level, then you touch, set up the value for that torque, move the axis and reach whatever you're gonna take. So the nice thing about, let's say in this case, using CMMTSD is that you have a way better options, a much better options to control the axis and have this tooling working for you in a, in a right way. So you can set up on position, force and any other way and everything is through, in this case, is an EtherCAD component, but you can run it on Profinet. You can also go in the old way also, the CMMO is still in the market, you can still use it, and you can use the standard CMMO. And the CMMO also has some nice features about force and, and position and everything else. It's just because when you run on CMMO, let's say this motor, if you guys can see on the screen, you have two cables coming into it. Is not the nicest way to do it, but this is an old demo that we have to show customers. But the new versions that we are bu we're building, actually, they're running on single cable technology, okay. which is clearly an advantage for customers. For the uh, for any the question, um, yeah, uh, I'll open I'll open the questions. Uh, I mean, if anyone wants to type a question, well, uh, I'll say this uh, for those people watching that are not very familiar with the whole Festo portfolio or or products. Uh, Alejandro mentioned two kind of products. So he mentioned CMMO. Uh, CMMO, it's back by basically um, a stepper drive. So you can look it up on Google. Uh, and then he also mentioned CMMT. So that's also, I mean, CMMT-ST, that's also a stepper drive. So I just wanted to clarify that for anyone that's not very familiar with the Festo lingo. So yeah, now, so yeah. this is pretty much what I have to share, what I have to say. If there's any question, it would be nice to answer. Yeah, so now um, we can see there, and I guess the rest of the participants can see the device there. Um, and I guess we can start talking about the takeaways from this session. Um, we can see there how compact it is. And I don't know, Alejandro, if you can, if you can flip it a little bit so we can see it from the other angle, like from the front. Yep. Sure, one second. Yeah, here we're looking at it from the side. Uh, but you can see what, what Oliver mentioned at the very beginning that you can move towards the left or towards the right. So it's bi-directional, right? Initially, yes, initially he mentioned that uh, the, I guess one of the first versions that, that were developed uh, was only moving one way, right? Mm -hmm. This one moves both ways. Um, another takeaway that I can, uh, that I take from, from today's session is that this is perfect for those applications like, for example, A ASRS or automated system retrieval, uh, automated, what is it? A A storage automated retrieval. Storage, <laughs> yeah, automated, automated storage, retrieval. storage retrieval. Systems, systems. I guess. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Bunch yeah. of shelves. That's that's what this is for. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it's perfect because now the 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 footprint it's very small. Uh, you can go both ways, so you can have storage on both ways. Um, Oliver uh, showed a, a very nice example about, for example, a vending machine, but other applications that I've seen is, for example, um, testing uh, electronic components. Um, mm -hmm. I've worked in, a, in, in, in some applications before, for example, testing hard drives. A lot of the times they have to put the hard drive in one spot and then they will test it and then and leave it there, right, for X amount of time. And then they will, they will uh, change it, uh, they will load another hard drive on the other side and then put it there. And now imagine an array of, mm -hmm. I don't know, 500 hard drives. So now this, this tool could be going and, and picking from there. Um, yep. Another yeah, another key. application. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, I'll just quick one. The key is because it's so slim. That means each row can be closer together, mm -hmm. which then increases the density. So that's right. that's the benefit of this one. Yeah. Right. The other thing is uh, one of the projects that we built recently was using magnets, as Oliver mentioned. So mm -hmm. you don't need to have a particular tool running with the additional cables. Mm -hmm. In this case, we, we did a mechanical, how you call that, Oliver? It's a mechanical um, It was just a permanent mechanism. Magnet. Yeah, permanent magnet. So yeah. that allows you to reduce the amount of cables and so on. I don't know if you guys can see the, the video I'm broadcasting right now. So you can see the yeah. rack and pinion system yeah. going through, right? And then at the end of, on the end of arm tooling, you have all the setup for the belt that is hitting inside the mechanism. Nice. Right. 
And we also have uh, the homing switch. We did actually a specific bracket that goes inside the mechanism. Ah. So this allows you to do the homing because one of the nice things about this actually is a challenge too, is how you home a mechanical system inside this high density yeah. uh, device. Yeah, that's right? important. And if you, yeah. and, and that, that's something that we also develop, which is a, a special bracket that goes in between um, the, the rack and pinion and the axis and has a latch. So these are is mechanical, not mechanical moving parts, but it's like a sensor, sensor and a mechanical latch. So that allows you for how you home it without crashing the axis, for yeah. example, going to one end or the other. So home, a safe home would be in the middle position where everything's exactly. in the middle. Yeah, exactly. Because normally if you home to a hard stop, you would be extending or retracting this tooling, yeah. which and who knows what's main, in front. Main crash. Can you yeah, ask? yeah. Oliver, we have a question there from Trevor. Uh, he's asking about the maximum payload again, so we can, if we can specify. Yeah, so that one, that one was about five kilos, which you see there. Okay. And the reach, the reach is about 760, specifically it's 768 millimeters. So from the middle to the, to the end of the telescopic range, how, how um, much was it? Was it 700? Sorry, is that, that's end to end, um, 768. But from the 768 middle- 768 millimeters from end to end. Yeah, so that's fully extended to fully retracted. Yeah, so, and um, from, and from the middle? 384. And uh, from the middle would be 384. Yeah, so half of that. Okay, 384 um, from the middle. I'm just typing it here in the chat. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, perfect. Um, I was going to ask another question and now I forgot. We have, uh, we have approximately six minutes left uh, for the session. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we, we got some questions in the chat. Um, anyone else that, have, that may have some questions, feel free to unmute yourself or you can just type them in the chat. You're welcome to do that as well. Uh, I had another question. We want, we want to hear voices, guys. <laughs> Everybody's so quiet. <laughs> right. Spaniel or We're gonna start singing soon. I, I think some people are just shy and they prefer to just type it in the chat. That's yeah, yeah, fine yeah, no, too. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine too. Um, this is a nice success. When I remember when we were setting up this, it's really hard to get into the area where the gantry actually is moving. You remember that, right? Like in order to get into these high density storage oh, systems. Oh, so physically walking, yeah. Like yeah, physically it's... walking is horrible. Yeah, so we um, have to actually yeah. move the axis completely out and then set it up out of the gantry or out, out of the working area and then push it in. Because as, as Oliver mentioned, is a, is a premium. Like every spot is really, really hard to get into it. Mm -hmm. And is also a premium uh, you know, price that you pay for exactly, that particular yeah. spot. So, so that's nice. Having this tooling is nice, is nice actually, because you can get X like very precisely uh, into that particular, and you remember that we have RFID, RFID is actually, uh, Sandra, we have RFID readers and writers because right. we have to read particular tags inside mm -hmm. the system. So we have that in the tooling moving. We also have laser sensors that they don't move with the tooling, but they point towards every side. So we can check when the boxes are there and not mm -hmm. there. We can actually read the barcode and so on. So in the system, does the systems that we developed before was uh, two barcode readers, two high, like very precise laser scanners. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what was that? Uh, the RFID also. Everything was running on Ethercad, by the way, which is nice. So having having the servos, having everything, all the controls on Ethercad was a nice, nice thing to we have. We have to clarify something, though. I mean, uh, we've been talking about Ethercad, but we can also run Ethernet IP, Profinet, oh, Ethercad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, multiple definitely. protocols, right? So we don't want to. We don't yeah. want you go with the wrong impression. The one thing that I was going to mention is the most common. Uh, industries where I could probably see this being used at is, for example, yes, of course, vending machines, but pharmaceutical, of course, I see this a lot in Definitely. pharmaceutical and yeah. electronics. So as I mentioned, electronics uh, for, for testing purposes. Uh, one yeah. other application that I was thinking about that I participated in, in, in the past was 
uh, this customer was building PCs. So they will have these, these stacks of PCs and they will, once they finish, they have to test the PC, right? But booting up the PC and going through the video check, USB check, ethernet connection, that takes some minutes. So they will go and connect. So now imagine that you will have a system like this and it just connects something, right? It could, it could be yeah. something like this as well. So, um, so um, yeah. do you want to show the video, uh, Oliver, or you want me to do it? The, oh, the, the high-density ASM that we built. Yeah, I think you have it loaded up. So okay. you can, you can show Second. One thing we also sure. concepted uh, before is our, this telescopic tooling on, on AGVs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, autonomous yeah, guided vehicles. I think that's AGVs, what it stands for. That's, that's a good, that's a yeah. good idea. Yeah, Good example. I mean, it's it's all compact, right? So it yeah. all fits within the envelope of the AGV, and you know, it'll just go around and pick up bins. Yeah, um, I know that you're gonna show this video. We have three minutes left, so after showing this video, we'll probably wrap it up, wrap it up, and uh, and we'll continue talking yep. the next time. Yep. So this one's showing the okay. the can heavy guys, duty one. Can you guys see the video now? We see it. Yep. All right, great. I'm just gonna uh, just go a little bit further. This is one of the high density systems that we built. You can see the size of our racks. Um, and then let me just pause uh, somewhere here. So that footage you saw so, was us building it in Festo. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, our customer solutions department engineering site. And this is how you can, you can actually see how many tubes we have in one single system. And, and this is actually nice because you can move tubes from one side to the other. So the, how many tubes did we have on this it's one? Like 200 oh, tubes per tray. Yeah. And about 40 trays per side, I believe. Okay, that's a nice, that's a nice amount of tubes for testing purposes. So this handling system actually runs multiple gantries inside. So we were able to do all the handling for the center, which is moving tubes from one side to the other with the tooling that Oliver developed. But we also have gantries inside doing all the handling for pick and place and moving tubes from one point to the other. Uh, you can also see laser sensors, camera systems, everything running all together. And the nice thing about that, that tooling, which is fairly big, we were able to put all laser sensors, uh, barcode readers and everything inside nice yeah that's a, that's also another a very very important point uh, for these kind of systems that you want to have traceability right because now you can see these two is for X patient this yes. is the sample number X uh, and and this is what we're doing so you can trace it all through the process from start to the very beginning so you, you never lose track of that tube uh, that's oh, also take, very important take a look at this this is what is underneath these tooling so if you can see it, we have a high precision laser, laser sensor. Um, this is one of the Ethercad modules for IO. And we also have barcode readers on the other side. Yeah. So it you was a nice, cut off nice now, user Andrew. job. Probably yeah. like 30 seconds left. <laughs> yeah, we have like 30 <laughs> seconds left. But, uh, okay, I'll uh, stop. Yeah, thank you everyone awesome. for, uh, for joining today. Um, we really appreciate the time and we'll see you in a couple more weeks. Oliver, appreciate your time and thank you for uh, joining us no as problem. a special guest Thanks today. All right, guys. Anytime, anytime. Thank you so much. Have a good All day. Right, Thanks bye -bye. for sharing. Bye. Okay, bye.